Well guys, welcome back to another video. It's great to be back out. Now those of you who have seen my last video, you'll remember I've done street photography in downtown. Now, I'm still in a situation where they haven't got a card, unfortunately, so I am struggling to get to locations. Uh, so I'm concentrating on the downtown area at the moment. Now, looking back at my older videos, I realise that I haven't actually been round the seawall or around Stanley Park, so that's what I'm wanting to do today. Got up nice and early just before sunrise. Now, there is a forecast from today onwards. It's going to be sunny and bright skies uh, because we did have rainfall all through the night. So I was kind of hoping there was going to be a bit more colour in the sky. But that's not really what I've came for today. Today I wanted to do something different. I want to look for the intimate scenes, abstract shots. Uh, so that's what I'm going for today. So I want to be looking at old tree stumps and along the shoreline. Now the coastline and mainland here, it's not the most exciting. Um, but looking closely and hopefully we can find something. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on today. I'm going to be concentrating on those intimate scenes and see if I can come up with some nice abstract shots. Uh, you'll be surprised what you can see if you look hard enough. So that's what today is about. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the day brings. Uh, let's hope we get some images. It'd be nice to show you something different. Like I've said, I've never took you through Stanley Park. I showed you part of the coastline here. So I'll get back, we'll start our walk, explore Stanley Park, explore this coastline and see what we can come up with. Now the area I'm looking at here, it's so small, but with the 1 to 400, going in at 400 mil really emphasises the textures and these swirly patterns and shapes. Now to look at them with the human eye, you know, from a distance you wouldn't think much of it, but putting that longer focal length and going right in, I'm actually focusing on this small area here, it's such a small area. Uh, but I'll take some video and I'll show you how different it is when you emphasise that area. I always make sure that I don't go too tight in because when you go too tight in, when you go back and you want to add a crop, you limit yourself. So I always take it a little bit wider than you need. Now I've put the polarizer on, it's helping with some of that bright light that's coming in. It's darkening some of those uh, shades of brown and it's like gold and oranges, it's all different colours. Now, because I'm going in at such a long focal length at 400mm, I'm going to have to take a series of shots and I'm going to have to pay attention to the edges and the corners. See if we can get another image before I leave and then we'll carry on further into Stanley Park. So I've been waiting for the sunlight to go, believe it or not, because we're doing abstract shots and some of the barks have got sheen on. When you get some bright sunlight on those textures, it's hard to get rid of those bright highlights and the sheen. So now we've got some diffused light 
it's gone a bit overcast so that's going to be better for the shots that I've got in mind so I've came to the edge of Stanley Park now it's a little bit later in the day I've came across this stump now I've walked past this stump many a time and I've always been attracted to the colour of the bark now the first shot I want to go for you'll be able to see I've got some lovely textures down in the centre and on the edge we've got this raised bit of bark it's got some nice shapes on it's also got that colour now I'm using the 1 to 400 today I've brought two lenses with us uh, but the other lens I've got it's filming me I've got the 24mm 1.4 Sony G Master on the Sony A6600 that's what I'm recording the video with today so the main lens I'm going to be using today is the 1 to 400 because it really is great for doing abstract shots I'm at 100mm I've put the polarizer on it's just helping a little bit to bring out some of the details now I'm under exposing by one stop I said to you before about the sheen on the, the bark itself the fact that I'm under exposing it's really helping with those bright parts on the bark so I'm going to get on and get this image and see if I can find another image on this tree trunk before we leave Now it just goes to show, you know, we've got this one stump but if you take time to look around it, there's many photographs to be had. Now this is the most interesting side of the back on this trunk. At the other side it's rotted, it's, it's all broken and fallen away. But on this side, because it's not getting that direct force of the weather when it rains, it's a bit sheltered, it's maintained and it's still got some of that, that texture and obviously the colours are a lot different as well so I've came and got a bit lower down now I've got a section of the trunk here you remember before I said about where it slightly came away from the tree itself so the first shot I picked this area because we had the interest to the right hand side the interest down the centre and this raised bit of bark that added interest at the left hand side now for this shot I'm basically going for a half and half on this side you've got the swirly patterns you've got that colour that I was on about and at the other side just a little bit straighter so there's a bit of a difference and then we've got this separation down the centre now I've got a bit lower down with the tripod I'm shooting at 100mm again I've got as close as I can uh, with the 1 to 400 and I've focused in I'm just going to take two shots one on this side where it's slightly further out from the trunk and I'm going to focus on the opposite side and that's going to get everything sharp uh, that I want sharp that sun is being diffused at this moment in time so that's helping us out and I'll get this shot and I'll try it and then we'll make our way over to the coast Well, look at the size of that it's quite amazing to see the sheer size of this tree that I've came across here in Stanley Park we've got some new growth above the tree uh, it's actually feeding off the old rotten bark of this tree you'll be able to see the root system that's grown over the top uh, really is splendid to see now I was coming along the trails here 
through the park itself and I came across a coyote in the distance. So what I done was I made it into the trail where the coyote came and I was hoping to grab you some video footage of the coyote but it's took off uh, in the forest there. But because I've came in here, I came across this tree. I've never seen this before. What a size, it really is big. And uh, I thought it'd be nice to share it with you uh, when I come across subjects like this. Um, there is many of an old growth tree that still are alive here in Stanley Park. Many have been felled in the past, unfortunately. Uh, but every now and again, you still come across some of the old growth trees that are in here. So I'm going to leave this part of the forest, make it down onto the coast and see if we can get any more images. But what a great little find, or should I say a big find. Well guys, I've made my way through Stanley Park and I'm on the coast now. I'm here down on the beach and I've just been walking along this bit of the coastline here and I think I've came across my favourite image of the day. It looks absolutely amazing. Now I've got this old tree trunk here. Um, must have been here for years because the textures and the patterns on it are absolutely amazing. They're everywhere, you know. Yeah, I've never seen so much detail on a log. Now, this is what you've got to do when you do an abstract. You've really got to look for those finer details. And some of the best places to look at on old tree trunks like this. So if you ever see tree trunks on the beach, go up and have an explore. Have a good look around it because you'd be surprised what you find. Now, what I've found here, it just looks brilliant. It really does. Now, because the tide's just gone out, You've still got a bit of moisture in the tree trunk itself so it's left and created all these different shades of green browns there's oranges in there yellows because it hasn't fully dried out so it's really highlighting this area that i'm going to photograph now the area that i'm photographing bearing in mind we are on a beach it looks like a serpent it really does if you look closer in you've got like this bit that leads in from the right hand side and it looks like scales and then you've got what looks like a head here there's the eye the mouth it just looks tremendous so the idea i've got for this shot i'm using the one to 400 again and i'm going in at 100 mil and i've tried to flatten it out as much as i can so i don't have to stack too many images um, and I'm going to do a wide shot, so what I want to do is I want to include some of this pattern here, then the serpent's head, and then the body just leading off to the right hand side. Now there's some textures at the top that I like. I love these swirly patterns and the scaly formations at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a 4 by 5 as well. So let us know in the comments below. Uh, what you think of the, both the images and let us know what crop that you like. Um, I like 4x5 at the minute but I think this suits a wide shot because where, the way the body curves in and these are like where the, the paws or whatever they are but it really does look like a serpent, it's amazing. Um, so I'm going to shoot this at ISO 100, luckily there's a bit of cloud there so it's diffusing that harsh sunlight that we were getting because we are getting some harsh sunlight before it was getting quite sunny. It is cold because it's a lot windier here on the coast. Uh, I'm going to focus stack it. Uh, probably about four. Four shots should be enough. The, the indentations are there but they're not overly deep and it doesn't curve off too much. So I reckon about four to five shots is going to capture all that detail that I want to capture. But what a find. It really is. There could be more shots here. Look at all the detail. It's it's literally everywhere. So I am gonna have a good look round this tree trunk before I move on.
So I got that first shot of the serpent. Um, it really looked good on the back camera, so I can't wait to see that when I get back home. Now you'll be able to see we've got the sunlight again, and it's quite cold to be honest uh, here on the coast. Uh, but we've got this sunlight and it's not making for good images on this part of the log that I'm wanting. Now the reason being is we're getting hot spots in certain areas where I don't want, where I'm taking the photograph and we're getting shadows creeping in. What I want, I want it to be nice and balanced light so all I've got to do is wait for some of that cloud to cover the sun just like I did earlier and it makes it nice and even uh, lighting on the side of this log. So I've had another good look about. Now I really love this area here. You'll be able to see all these intricate shapes, lovely swirly patterns. We've got some nice contrast there because of the green algae that's on certain parts and then certain parts it's clear. So they really stand out, they really pop. Now I'm not keen on the colours of the green, I'll put some video up. Um, so what I'm thinking is because we've got darker shades and then we've got the the lighter shades I think it'll make for a nice black and white so what I'm doing is concentrating on the area that's got the most interest which is this area here and then when I get back home I'll crop it to how I like it now it will be a four by five um, but it, it's just a really nice interesting area and that's what you've got to do when you do an abstract you've just got to pick out the most interesting area that really grabs your attention and take the shot. So I'm taking this at 100 mil with the 1 to 400 again. Just got to wait for that cloud to cover the sun. When that cloud covers the sun, it's nice and balanced. So there's no reason to be putting the polarizer on. And uh, I'll grab this image and I'll put it on the screen above. So I'm still enjoying um, this log, I'm still here and I'm going to try for one more image before I leave. It is getting later in the day, the sunlight's quite bright but because it's getting lower in the sky it's a lot more diffused now than it was earlier on. So I've came across this part of this uh, log here, not much further from where I was before but I've loved this interest in the centre, it really stands out from this part of the trunk. But around it, you've got these lovely scale-like patterns. You've got this area of interest here, and it just swirls out towards this subject in the centre. And then beyond that, it continues out towards the edge. So that's the area that I want to capture. Now I'm taking it at 100mm with the 1 to 400 again. Now I'm underexposing by one stop because it is quite bright. There's no need to put the polarizer on. There's no sheen or anything like that even though the sun's bright because it's a lot lower in the sky it is a lot more balanced uh, more than it was before before it was quite harsh uh, so this is an image I want to capture before I go it is probably going to be the last image of the day um, but what a great find so I've had a brilliant day out and I hope you've enjoyed it so I'm going to get back grab this image and I hope you like it Thank you.
Well guys, as you can see, I've made way up from the coast there. Great time down there finding that old tree stump. There was a couple of images I managed to try while I was down there. Now the sun's pretty much gone down now. It's a lot later in the day. But I'm back up in Stanley Park. I've got this great big tree behind us. It's absolutely amazing. And it's been an amazing day. So I hope you can take something away from today's video. You know, last video I'd done street photography, the video before that I'd done landscape. Now today I wanted to try something different to show that you can do photography anywhere. So this was another way of showing you that you can do photography pretty much in the location that you live. You don't have to be limited. I've done abstract today, something different from my channel, showing you how you can look for the smaller scenes within the bigger scenes and still come up with images. So hopefully I've got some images to show you today. Hopefully you can take something away from today's video and try it out for yourself. It's all about exploration and seeing what you can capture. So if you've enjoyed today's video, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, it's much appreciated. I hope to give you another video soon. I don't know when, you know, I haven't got my transport, so it's a bit more difficult now. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. But until next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye.